Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is Overcoming Turbo Lag. Since General Motors introduced turbochargers in the Oldsmobile F85 and Chevrolet Corvair in 1962, engineers have been battling against turbo lag. This video showcases various turbocharger systems developed to overcome turbo lag. First, let's take a look at the structure and function of the turbocharger. If you are familiar with the turbocharger, feel free to skip this chapter using the seek bar. A turbocharger is a system that, by utilizing exhaust gases from the engine, rotates a turbine wheel and a compressor wheel that shares the same axis with the turbine wheel. This process forces a large volume of air into the engine, resulting in significant engine torque. It is common for this system to be equipped with an intercooler to cool the intake air. Compressed air becomes heated, causing a decrease in the oxygen molecule content within the air, leading to a reduction in output. To prevent this, an intercooler is installed between the compressor and the engine to lower the temperature of the compressed air. Intercoolers come in two types, the air-to-air -air intercooler, which uses the airflow during driving to cool compressed air, and the air-to-liquid intercooler, which relies on engine coolant for cooling. Until the 2000s. To prevent abnormal combustion, the compression ratio of turbo engines was kept relatively low, around 8 to 1. During the same period, naturally aspirated engines typically had a compression ratio of around 10 to 1. Turbo lag refers to the time delay between the driver depressing the accelerator pedal and the commencement of the engine speed increase. When the driver depresses the accelerator pedal, the throttle valve opens. When the turbocharger rotation speed is low, because significant resistance in the intake and exhaust pathways, and a low compression ratio, the engine is only a low efficiency. As a result, despite the increased volume of air intake into the engine, the rise in engine speed is gradual, and the turbocharger rotation speed does not increase significantly. After the engine speed and the exhaust gas are increased, the turbocharger rotation speed begins to rise. The increase in turbocharger rotation leads to higher boost pressure, resulting in increased engine torque and a rapid rise in engine speed. Generally, the time lag is longer with larger turbochargers. Turbochargers have a significant antinomy. In small turbochargers, even at low engine speed with low exhaust gas volume, the turbine wheel can rotate and generate sufficient boost pressure. However, in large turbochargers, due to the small exhaust gas volume, the turbine wheel cannot rotate, thus boost pressure does not rise, leading to low engine torque. As the engine speed increases and the exhaust gas volume becomes larger. Even in large turbochargers, the turbine wheel can rotate, and the large diameter compressor wheel generates high boost pressure. On the other hand, in small turbochargers, the turbine wheel becomes exhaust resistance and does not increase torque. Additionally, the turbine wheel may experience overspeed, and in the worst case, the turbocharger may be damaged. Let's check for turbo lag on the engine performance curve chart. The chart on the left shows the 1983 Honda ER engine. It has a displacement of 1.2 liters, a maximum power output of 81 kilowatts, and a maximum torque of 160 newton meters. The compression ratio is 7.6 to 1. The chart on the right shows the 2016 Volkswagen EA211 TSI EVO engine. It has a displacement of 1.5 liters, a maximum power output of 96 kilowatts, and a maximum torque of 200 newton meters. The compression ratio is 12.5 to 1. Take a look at the flashing section of the Honda engine. The torque is low, in the low engine speed range, and maximum torque is generated at 3000 revolutions per minute. On the other hand, the Volkswagen engine generates maximum torque over a wide range of revolutions, from 1300 to 4500 revolutions per minute. You can clearly see, that the old Honda engine has turbo lag. It can be said that the development of turbocharger technology thus far has been aimed at overcoming this turbo lag.
If the sole purpose is to reduce turbo lag, simply downsizing the turbo would suffice. The smaller turbine and compressor will have lower mass, allowing them to rotate even with small amounts of exhaust gas at low engine speeds, increasing boost pressure. However, at high engine speeds, a large amount of exhaust gas flows in, causing the turbine wheel to overspeed and potentially damage. To prevent this, a wastegate is provided. A wastegate is a system that controls the amount of exhaust gas flowing to the turbine wheel, based on the balance between boost pressure and spring force. When the engine speed increases and the boost pressure reaches a certain level, and the boost pressure exceeds the spring force within the wastegate actuator, it opens the valve to allow exhaust gases to bypass the turbine through a passage. Because adoption of a wastegate restricts the maximum boost pressure, it allows for the use of small turbochargers and enables supercharging even at low to mid-range engine speeds. However, wastegates are merely a compromise for reducing turbo lag and low boost pressure at high engine speed and do not provide a fundamental solution. The blow-off valve is a system that suppresses the decrease in turbocharger rotation speed when the throttle valve is closed. In a system without a blow-off valve, even when the throttle valve is closed, compressor wheel continues to rotate due to inertia, causing increased pressure in the intake pipe and significant deceleration of the compressor wheel. In a system with a blow-off valve, the blow-off valve opens in response to an increase in pressure in the intake pipe, allowing the pressure to escape to the upstream of the compressor wheel. This system helps to mitigate the deceleration of the compressor wheel, thereby reducing turbo lag during re-acceleration. In 1981, Maserati adopted the world's first twin turbo engine for a production car, installing it in their Bitterbo. Twin turbo utilizes two small turbos instead of a large one turbo. Compared to a large turbo, a small turbo has lower inertia moments of the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel, which allows for a reduction in turbo lag. Additionally, by appropriately connecting the exhaust pipes, it is possible to prevent interference from exhaust gases from each cylinder, thereby accelerating the spool-up of the turbine wheel and reducing turbo lag. Since the late 1980s, twin scroll turbos have been adopted in rotary engines and four-cylinder engines. Twin scroll turbo divides the inlet of the turbine housing into two, preventing exhaust gas interference and improving turbo lag. In 1986, Porsche adopted the world's first sequential twin turbo for the 959. Sequential turbo utilizes two turbochargers, which are switched between based on the engine speed. During low engine speeds, a small turbocharger with lower inertia moments works to reduce turbo lag. At high engine speeds, the small turbocharger is bypassed, and the large turbocharger generates high boost pressure. In 1985, Nissan adopted a variable geometry turbocharger for the VG20 ET engine. A variable geometry turbo achieves a balance between high boost pressure at high engine speeds and reducing turbo lag at low engine speeds by altering the exhaust gas flow path by the vanes in the turbine housing. At high engine speeds, the flow path is widened, creating minimal resistance to allow exhaust gases to smoothly impact the turbine wheel. At low engine speeds, the flow path is narrowed to increase the velocity of exhaust gases, thereby maintaining the turbine wheel rotational speed. In recent years, car manufacturers have been combining turbos of different sizes and variable geometry turbos in various ways. For example, the BMW N57S diesel engine employs a triple turbo setup, using two variable geometry turbos and one large turbo. In 1989, Nissan introduced the MA09ERT engine, equipped with a mechanical supercharger and a turbocharger into the market. Also, in 2008, Volkswagen introduced the EA111 engine with a similar system. A turbocharger is a type of supercharger that utilizes the energy of exhaust gases, whereas a mechanical supercharger utilizes crankshaft rotation. 
it can be effective at low engine speed. On other hand, it can become a heavy load at high engine speed and may no longer contribute to increased output. Therefore, during high engine speed, the operation of the supercharger is halted by turning off the electromagnetic clutch on the pulley. In automobiles, two main types are primarily used, the roots blower and the lism compressor. Lism compressors, being more efficient for internal compression, have been widely adopted in mechanical superchargers since the 1990s. However, with the current advancements in turbocharger performance, there are not many vehicle models that utilize superchargers. In Nissan MA09ERT and Volkswagen EA111 engine, a combination of mechanical supercharging at low engine speeds and turbocharging at high engine speeds was employed to reduce turbo lag and achieve high boost at high engine speed. An electric turbocharger is a system that uses an electric motor to rotate a compressor wheel and force air into the engine. While it doesn't utilize exhaust gas energy, it is not a turbocharger in the strict sense. However, because of its shape, it is commonly referred to as an electric turbocharger. At low engine speeds that have low exhaust gas flow, the electric turbocharger produces boost pressure to reduce turbo lag. At high engine speeds, where there is a sufficient amount of exhaust gas flow, the electric turbocharger is bypassed, and the normal turbocharger provides the boost. The anti-lag system is a system designed to maintain the rotation of the turbocharger wheels when the accelerator pedal is released. Without anti-lag system, when the driver releases the accelerator pedal, the throttle valve is closed. The fuel injection and spark plug ignition are interrupted, causing a significant reduction in the amount of exhaust gas sent to the turbine wheel, resulting in a decrease in the turbine wheel rotation speed and a decrease in boost pressure. In an anti-lag system, the throttle valve remains open even when the driver releases the accelerator pedal. Since fuel injection and spark plug ignition are interrupted, the engine operates as an air pump driven by the rotation of tires, sucking in and expelling air. The turbocharger can suppress a decrease in turbine wheel rotation speed and boost pressure by allowing airflow from the engine to flow in. Downsized turbocharged engines have adopted this method of anti-lag system. In racing cars, rally cars, and tune cars, even more proactive methods are adopted. The throttle valve remains open even when the driver releases the accelerator pedal. Fuel is injected. The spark plug is ignited at the exhaust stroke rather than the usual compression stroke. Therefore, the fuel combusts within the exhaust manifold. In the high pressure gases rotate the turbine wheel, suppressing the decrease in boost pressure. Due to deterioration in exhaust gas characteristics, it does not comply with regulations. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.